Good morning, I'm Walt Bartman and I'm the founder and director of the Yellow Barn Studio at Glen Echo, Maryland. And today we're interviewing one of our instructors, an art historian, uh, Irina Stotland, who's been teaching at the uh, Yellow Barn Studio for uh, a few years now. And, uh, you know, we've enjoyed having her as one of our faculty members. Good morning, Irina, how are you? Good, how are you, Walt? It's a pleasure to see you and meet you on Zoom. Um, the uh, Today, the uh, format will be to just ask you a few questions, just as a very comfortable, um, you know, presentation here, interview, and uh, get to, so that people can get to know you. So I'm, uh, you know, looking forward to hearing uh, some things about you and how you look at the, um, you know, work with your students and things like that. So first of all, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? So, um... I, my name is Irina Stotland. I have a PhD in the history of art from Bryn Mawr College. I've been teaching for the past six, five, six years. Um, uh, the last year has been on Zoom, so it's been a little different. And I've joined Yellow Barn two years ago. So um, this is a new, a sort of a new experience for me because I'm teaching artists instead of just general public. So it's been a little bit of a change in format. Um, let's see, my research interest, the what my dissertation was on, is 19th century French post-impressionism, and specifically Paul Gauguin. Uh, but I've been teaching a range of courses, starting from ancient art and architecture of Mesopotamia, all the way to abstract expressionism uh, of 1950s. Yeah, this is really great. Hearing uh, uh, Paul Gauguin's name, by the way, uh, he's one of my favorites. I do a lot with color, and he was the big influence on a lot of the artists, uh, you know, 20th century painters, uh, uh, as far as color is concerned. He was the one who encouraged Roussier to uh, use pure color, all right? He, he told him just right out of the tube. So I think, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have... Uh, uh, that kind of focus, and uh, you know, you bring a lot to our um, our program. So the um, thing that I would like to know is, um, when you started uh, as an art historian, um, is there anything you can tell us about, um, you know, you and your uh, working with your students? So I, um, my first interest in art history and teaching art history has to do with my family. Um, and my grandmother specifically, she was an art historian and she worked in a museum. And so I've been always, I've always been fascinated with images. I think we all are. We live in a world that's overflowing with visual stimuli. So visual literacy, I think is really important um, to teach. It, it should, in my opinion, it's a necessary part of education. We need to know how to evaluate what we see because we are bombarded by images all the time. So for me, that is one of the sort of the driving forces, one of the reasons as to why I went into, into teaching. Um, I also find art endlessly fascinating. I think it's the best way to learn about the world. It is. Our history is interdisciplinary by nature, so it you know it it tugs on threads of religion, spirituality, psychoanalysis, um, philosophy, chemistry. But I think most of all, it's about history. I think art history is the best way to understand ourselves because you look at the at the at an artifact that's been created in a certain cultural movement. And once you un unravel all the threads, you can understand the culture. So I, for me, it's just a very exciting thing to be able to do and to relate to the students. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an important part. Let me ask you a question. Because you're teaching at the Yellow Barn, most of our students are artists. So how do you feel, um, you know, uh, it, this kind of uh, art history class will benefit our students? So, well, first of all, as I said, visual literacy, I think it's important, especially for artists. You need to be able to understand how an image works. How does it translate into 
telling a narrative. What is the visual narrative? How does it work? Um, you need to be able to understand how to convey an emotional message as well, I think. And I think the most useful things, the sort of most useful practical thing is formal analysis. Because it's almost like reverse engineering for artists. Once you understand how to construct an image and you understand how a masterpiece has been constructed, you can incorporate them into your practice. Um, you know, elements of art or principles of design, all of these things are directly applicable to, to the process. Yeah, and I, I know that your background, you know, you uh, having your PhD, you studied under, with some very important people. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well, so my, um, my advisor at Bryn Mawr was Professor Levine, Professor Stephen Levine, and he wrote a very important book on Monet from the point of view of psychoanalysis. So that's a little bit, I think, too complicated to, to relay in just a class. You need to have a seminar and people who have read before. But I think what graduate school in general has given me and what I'm trying to give to the students is an ability in an open mind um, which gives you that ability to look at things from different perspectives. What, and, and the most important thing is the understanding that the way we see is not universal. And I think it has almost sort of, you know, humanist repercussions. Once you understand that, it opens you up. What, one of the objectives for me when I'm teaching, and I'm very clear about this, I'm very emphatic about this, is that you do not compare different cultures in terms of their quality. It, it's a useless thing and it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous thing. Um, and that's what has been done for the longest time. And we sort of look at the Western uh, art history as almost as, like the end result of a linear evolution and it's not. And we should be aware that there are different cultures that produce different arts and it just it enriches our looking once you understand that yeah so i think it also makes artists more self-aware and i think that's also important once you understand that you are a product of a western culture then you can maybe change things and maybe you can look at other things and and become more diverse in what you produce how did you pick uh, your focus? As you mentioned, uh, the Impressionist period or post-Impressionist period with Paul Gauguin. How did you how did you find that to be something that you really wanted to explore? Well, just like you, I really like looking at them. I think that you know that's the funnest part. I think of nineteenth century is the period of post-Impressionism. All that color, all that freedom. The first sort of mm, step on the pathway of liberating art from any sort of tie to, to literature, to religion. And it's just this incredibly expressive mode of creating. Mm -hmm. And Gauguin, for me specifically, um, it just, he puzzled me and I wanted to find out more. There's so, he crams his paintings with symbols. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like a work of a decoder like a spy <laughs> who cracks the code and so i i that that was my entry point there mm -hmm. well that sounds uh, that's pretty interesting to, to see how you kind of picked uh, that uh, that direction uh so let me ask you a question um what do you feel your students get from your classes and what do you want them uh, to achieve in your classes so i think all of the things that i mentioned if maybe um if, if they can get at least part of them, I would be happy. The first thing I want them to understand that there is this endless supply of art in the world. Um, that those, you know, it, it could be painting, it could be sculpture, it could be material culture. All of these things are a source of inspiration and a source of knowledge. I want them to be able to approach a painting and understand how it came to be. Uh, Irvin Panofsky, I think it was him, came up with three questions about how you approach a work of art. You need to answer all three. Um, what is it? 
Why does it look the way it does? And what does it mean? So if we can, if I can give them tools to at least try to answer those questions, I would be happy. Yeah, well, that's, uh, this is, a, you know, for all of us, I think this is one of the things about teaching. We've, we've come to this as a, a career. Um, and, you know, the thing about, uh, you know, working with uh, students, I think is real important. I, all I can tell you is, you know, one of the things about having you on the faculty is that it really, um, the students have an opportunity. They have a really great opportunity to work with you and to, uh, you know, and to have the guidance that you can give them in understanding what art history is. And, and just uh, the fact that uh, they are painters is one thing, but we also want students to take the classes who might not be painters. So how does that work? Um, well, this is, the classes that I offer are geared towards general audiences. You don't need to have a whole, you know, a, a whole slew of, um, sources before you come in. You don't need to have a PhD in art history. You don't need to even have taken a class on art history. I start, I, I always start with the history, the, the historical context of the moment to explain where we are. So we can understand a little bit about the language that the artist is speaking. And so I do gear towards a very, um, I want it to be easily digestible. I want, I want to be approachable. I don't want this to be some sort of a, a, an ivory tower situation that they have to climb. But, you know, I, I want this to be fun for them. And so I always try, the way that I structure my lectures, I want to have a story. So I'm telling a story and I want them to be involved and discussions on the necessary part of this. I always involve them. They need to speak because that's the way we process. That's the way we digest. And so if you have an interesting story and you're a part of it, then you retain it. And so for me, that's important. I, I don't want to be bored just like they don't want to be bored. Well, I know you've brought a presentation to share with us. So uh, would you like to do that now and maybe perhaps talk? I know this is sort of an example of what we're, we've been talking yeah. about. So I am going to show you an example of the class that, that I just finished at Yellow Barn. Let me hide this. Um, I offer three types of classes. So this is the first type. This is a survey course, and it covers um, a range of artistic movements during a given period of time. So this class was on modern art, and this is basically the later part of the 19th century to the basically mid, so from 1850s to 1950s. It covers 100 years. And it was eight classes, so it could run longer or shorter, depending on what I'm covering. And this was our last class on abstract expressionism, where we finally moved to America. We've been in France for the longest time. Then in the early 20th century, we went to Russia to talk about the Black Square, which is a source of fascination always. And then finally, we go, we moved to America, where in New York becomes the cultural capital of the West in that particular moment. And so this is this is the presentation that the two and a half hour lecture that I gave. Um, as you can see, you know, it's the title of the course and the title of the class. And then I have the three parts in which I divided the class. Um, so, so, so they see, they can see the, the movements within the movements and the people within within the movements there. So I start with historical context. I talk about what is abstract expressionism, how it came to be that this is post-World War II, how it was possible because all of these European refugees come to America, come to New York, a lot of them. All of these artists are now influencing American art scene like Marcel Duchamp or Marc Chagall. And you also have people like Peggy Guggenheim that becomes a champion of modern art. Then I talk about what is abstract expressionism, how it is formed and what influences it. Like what are the aesthetic sources? So it builds on the other movements on expressionism, on cubism, on surrealism. And it builds on the philosophical concept like sublime and it builds on uh, psychoanalysis that becomes all the rage at the particular point. And then we start talking about art itself. 
and we start discussing people and the images that they produced. So there are these earlier artists that become sort of teaching figures to the younger generation. And then we talk about, you know, people like Jackson Pollock, for example, and there I give a brief biography, sort of the little timeline that so we can have a framework for discussing his art. I, in, in when I talk about abstract artists, one of the funniest questions I get, it's funny to me, is do they know how to paint? How did they, <laughs> why are they painting abstraction? So I always include their early work to show that they do know how to paint. Mm -hmm. And that's a conscious choice. It's an intention. Um, and then I show sort of the development of, of his art, how he goes through all of these spaces, how he's influenced by expressionism, by surrealism, by expressionism, like Vasily Kandinsky here on the left. And then if we're talking about the contemporary artists or modern artists, and they have some video evidence to show them, I include that too. Um, sort of teeny tiny tidbits of video. For example, I have a video here I found of um, th there was a, a film shot about Pollock and about how he works. So I think that helps too when they see, especially if you have artists in the audience, they can identify easier. They see themselves in that artist working. And that also helps with my argument that this is not an accidental painting that he actually. Mm -hmm. um, that he actually knows what he's doing. He has an idea here. Yeah. So this is very briefly um, what we do. And then we go into formal analysis and we look at the actual images and we try to discuss them. Of course, it's a little bit difficult discussing abstract paintings, but we persevere. We, we find things to talk about, like the formal elements, like what we feel when we look at those paintings, how he is able to make us feel that. Um, and we try to answer those three questions that Panofsky uh, posed for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember Panofsky. It's really interesting. Uh, uh, you know, I, I did my MFA at uh, American University, and I think you had an uh, instructor uh, there that uh, um, you studied with, uh, Brody, right? I did not study with her, but I, did, I was part of the... Um, of the book that she edited, I wrote an article that she was she was an editor for the for the perspective. Uh, it was perspective, new perspectives on Paul Gauguin, um, and I was very lucky to be included there. So she is a great scholar, obviously. Well, and you know what? That speaks well of you. I mean, this is what I want people to understand. We have a, a, a an instructor at the Ella Barn who's um, honestly one of our, uh, you know. Uh, you know, when we talk in terms of experience, but you know, you're young, but you have a, you have a lot of experience you've studied with or had experiences with uh, some really important, uh, you know, uh, historians. And, uh, you know, that's something you bring to, I think, uh, uh, your students too. And that's, that's important. So um, is there anything else that you would like to talk about with this? Oh, um, I just wanted to mention, so this is the survey course. This is the one type of class that I offer, which is a survey. And some people like that, getting lots of lots of information. Um, and the class is running longer for eight to 10 classes, uh, eight to 10 weeks. I also offer shorter classes, which are usually uh, three, lectures, three lectures or three to five, let's say that lecture series that are that focus on specific movements. So like I taught a class at Yellow Barn on post-impressionism. So that would be a shorter class and we will concentrate on, uh, I talked about Gauguin, Van Gogh and Cezanne. So that, you know, that would satisfy a different type of audience. And then finally I offer classes that concentrate on a specific artist. So then we spend three lectures on just, let's say on just Gauguin. And you can go much deeper into um, into their motivations and then into the look that he is going for. So it, it's a it's a range of classes that I like to to suggest. And some people usually what happens is that somebody takes a survey class, they get interested in the movement, take them a class on the movement, and then they want to study a specific artist. It sort of goes from you know from top 
top, top down, I guess. Yeah. It's, it, uh, I, I find art history very, very important. I try to bring it to all my students in my classes. You know, I don't have the background that you have, but I, I, I really try to, you know, kind of whet their appetite. And honestly, I think that when we talk in terms of what our program is about, we really want our students to have this experience. So I think people need to, who, who are watching this video, need to really consider uh, studying with you because I think that they'll, uh, they'll learn a lot. And, you know, some of these are survey courses in the beginning, but like you said, it just opens up the, um, the, the book to even uh, deeper, uh, you know, exploration. And I think, uh, you know, this is what we're hoping, hoping to do here at the Old Barn. So uh, this is this really is so interesting to me, and I love the way you've presented it. And uh, the Zoom is working for you then. Yes, um, as as you frequently say, it opens up the whole of the world. They don't need to come physically; they can be anywhere, yeah, can... Europe, if they're interested. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you know. Um, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we our audience now is uh, not only in the United States, and I think that uh, you have, you know, bring a, an opportunity for anyone who's watching this video, and this video is going to be up on YouTube. It's going to be available to anyone who, who wants to, to uh, watch it, all right? And, uh, you know, and then they can get in contact with us at the Yellow Barn, you know, yellowbarnstudio.com, and, you know, sign up for one of your courses. We're enrolling now, so I think that's one of the things that's real important. Um, okay, so is there any other things that uh, uh, you'd like to, to say about this before we move on? No, I think that's been great. Okay, let's uh, maybe, uh, I don't know how you want to change the screen sharing, uh, but we can maybe just get back to ourselves here. Sure. And then, um, here we go. Uh, you know, this is, uh, for all of you that are watching, this is a, an important thing for you uh, to get to know who uh, we have teaching at the Yellow Barn. The level of teaching, the experience, the uh, depth of understanding of their fields. We have some of the top people. And I think, uh, you know, Irina is uh, uh, one of the, uh, you know, important uh, art historians uh, that I know. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate to just be able to have her um, to, uh, decide to teach for us. So I think it's been great having you. Um, the, um, you know, for, I guess what I would say now is, um, you know, let's sign up for Irina's course, right? <laughs> let's, let's get people to be excited about this, all right? And um, so I'm gonna say uh, uh, thank you all for, uh, for watching. And Irina, thank you so much. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Yeah, this is, this is wonderful. Um, all right, folks, I uh, hope to see you again. Uh, you know, uh, as I said, uh, Irina is be, will be teaching. It's yellowbarnstudio.com, and uh, you can sign up for courses there. And uh, what are you teaching this term, What uh, this spring term? I am offering, what am I teaching? <laughs> <laughs> I am offering class on Velasquez, Diego Velasquez. Oh, uh, Diego Velasquez of Kings and of Kings and Men, and I'm offering class on Toulouse Lautrec. So I'm offering two in sort of very focused uh, three lecture series, three three lectures series. Yes, yeah. <laughs> three classes in the series, um, and um, I am I think both of these artists are fascinating. Yeah, they are, and uh, that's another uh, important thing I think. Uh, you know, for anybody who's uh, interested in a course like this, uh, you know, Irene is going to bring a different, uh, a different artist in that each term. So I think this is one of the things uh, important uh, for anybody who's interested in really learning about art history. Well, thank you, folks. I want to say uh, it was great having you watch this video, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon. All right. Thanks again. Bye.